I'm pretty sure I found the craziest 1990s movie ever, and no, I don't think I'm lying. Hey everyone, hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're going to be watching the movie Samurai Cop from 1991. So let's not wait around any longer. Let's go ahead and hop right into what people had to say about this movie. Honestly speaking, and without any hints of sarcasm, this movie does not feel boring at any point throughout the entire duration. With each scene, it keeps getting worse and worse until it can only get so bad it actually becomes entertaining as hell. Five out of five would recommend. Every scene is a complete and utter catastrophe. The movie tried to actually be a movie, but failed miserably. This is the worst movie I ever watched. It was so bad it made me wonder how this movie got made in the first place. This movie only had a budget of $7,000, so oh boy am I looking forward to this. Alright, let's just jump into it. We are not an established gang yet, my friend. You should be very cautious. In my opinion, try to make friends with all the gangs. Japanese. Holy crap, that's not racist at all. We start with the most stereotypical Asian mob boss talking to some random guy about how their gang is not an established gang yet and they need to make friends with all the other gangs, like the Japanese, the Chinese, and he apparently seems to think that there's only gangs in Asian countries. Here comes the boss. What happened, Okomura-san? Shirimasen! No, no deal, no friendships with anybody! Hante Yeah, yeah! Huh? Right now, I want that old Chinese fox dead! Okay, boss. I wish I could explain to you what's happening right now, but I don't know what's going on. I have no idea what just happened, but I think they're going to kill some Chinese mob boss. Good morning, Mr. Lee. Have you decided to work with us? Kamiyonga. In no way we go under Fujiyama's flag. This is so bad! I think he said, no, we don't want to work with you. I think I'm going to translate this whole movie, but instead it sounded like, Hotter Fujiyama's flag. Mr. Fujiyama doesn't want to waste any more time. In the middle of all this gunfight, there's like two of the people just not moving at all. They don't even seem to be phased by the fact that gunfire is happening, that there's people getting killed around them. They're like, don't even trip, dog. We're not, we're not worried about this gunfire. And then what was that at the very end? The guy says, you did it! You did it! I'm responsible for bringing you from San Diego. Are you sure this is a good bust? Yeah. Cocaine. I'm responsible for bringing you in from San Diego. Are you sure this is a good bust? Yeah. Cocaine. There's the blue van over there. So the van belongs to the Katana gang. Let's call for the helicopter. So now our main character, the long-haired dude, who is the samurai cop, I'm assuming, has entered the scene with his partner, and they are trying to track down the blue van of the Katana gang, which I'm assuming are the people that killed those Chinese leaders. So now they end up in a wild goose chase. <laughs> The car they're trying to catch peels off and then they're just casually getting back into their car. They couldn't have shot a scene of him like getting into his car urgently. We get incredibly long footage of this building here for no reason and I'm not sure what purpose it serves in the car chase but we just get stock footage of this building here. I can see the blue van. And we're back with more random footage of not the blue van. So now they have chased this van down to the marina, they are trying to stop these guys from selling this briefcase full of cocaine. But then Samurai Cop says, oh there's one road, and this one road is the only road they can exit out on, so we need to go on this road. And then for some reason he gets out of his car, and then looks around the corner, and then sees the van coming, and then gets back into his car to then get ready to chase them, when he could have just stayed in his car the entire time. This is so inefficient. Shoot! Shoot him! That guy gets shot and then just rolls out of the car so slowly. You can tell they just sped up the footage really fast and then he just rolled slowly like two miles per hour out of the van. It just makes the scene more funny to me. Hey man, watch it! Watch it! Oh, oh man! Did they just run over that guy? Is that their way of saying he got run over? Because <laughs> that's hilarious. Shoot! Shoot him! Samurai Cop just keeps yelling shoot him during this car chase and every time he yells shoot him no one shoots at the bad guy but the bad guy shoots back at them every single time he yells shoot. It's almost like he's yelling at the bad guy shoot him shoot my partner shoot him I'm so sick of this guy. Also every time they go to anybody in this scene they're constantly like looking around like oh my goodness they gotta keep looking around. <laughs> Shoot 
If there's anything I've gotten out of this fight, it's that this helicopter has been absolutely useless the whole time. They're on some tour of the city, looking at random parking lots, freeways, and buildings for all we know. Every time we see her, it looks like she's almost half asleep as it is. Let's go! Go! Wait a minute, that car was rolling, and then it stopped and then started again. Why didn't they just pull a U-turn like the van did? <laughs> Instead of having any actual trained professionals put the fire out, they had the two actors who are actually acting in this movie put the fire out. I don't know, I just, it could have gone horribly if they did that wrong, so. So now they've caught the guys, and I'm assuming that this Katana gang is not too happy about that. I just want to point out, I've never seen such a non-menacing villain's home. Like, look at these stairs, look at this, this looks like my grandma's home. Like, look at those pink curtains right there. I'm pretty sure that I had that chandelier in my grandparents' house as well. So they call him Samurai, huh? Yes, his real name is Joe Marshall. Wait a minute, so they know already that this guy's called Samurai Cop? Where did he get this reputation of being a Samurai Cop? Also, his name's Joe Marshall. I would change my name to Samurai Cop, too. That name is garbage. He speaks fluent Japanese. He got his martial arts training from the masters in Japan. Oh man, sounds like we got a badass over here. Everyone watch out. He was brought over here from the police force in San Diego to fight us. No, yeah, well, no, we just brought him in from the police force in San Diego. Very samurai-ish of him to be on the police force of San Diego. If he's a samurai, what the hell are you? I'll get to know him, and then we'll see who the real samurai is. So this random white dude on this bad guy's gang is also a samurai now, you're trying to tell me? Because he doesn't have a lick of Japanese in him, I know that. He is straight white dude. Also, every time this boss is in this movie and talking, he just sounds like a cranky old man just yelling orders. Bring me my applesauce! Somebody help me up, I have to go to the bathroom! Give me more chicken noodle soup, my teeth hurt! So you know where our man is? Yes, boss. I know the hospital and the room, and he's burned bad. Real bad. I know the hospital and the room, and he's burned bad. How bad is he burned? Real bad. Oh, that's really bad. He won't be able to talk. I want him dead. I want his head cut off and brought here. I want his head on this piano so that every man in my organization understands once more that no katana gets captured alive or talked. So he's trying to be a menacing gang leader. We get it. We're all there on board with it. We've seen the movies. But it seems like this guy's having a hard time figuring out a place that he wants his head put. He's looking around. He's like, uh, put his head on this piano right here. Because every single time someone tries to play piano, I want them to be reminded that nobody Nobody messes with the katana gang. I will bring you his head and I will place it on your piano. I know the real samurai is here. Why piano? It's so specific. So I'm lying there in bed with probably the most beautiful woman I've ever met in my life. Hey, what are you talking about? I'm just kidding, you know you're number one. So anyway, you get on the phone and you tell me that these, uh, what's his name, Omaha, Yamaha, whatever his face his name is, right, is after me. So I figured I'm gonna have to knock a couple of these guys off. And I know I'm gonna get the speech from Captain Roma. I told you guys I don't <laughs> want any more dead bodies. Yeah, this really seems like the top-notch cop that you want to bring in for the most dangerous gang that you've dealt with in a while. The player who gets all the ladies who's racist against Asian people very clearly, but for some reason has adopted their culture, and is also just interested in dropping bodies left and right, because that's what we need in this situation. We need somebody who's just gonna start blasting. Your pieces. My gun. Oh, huh. Anyway, I started blasting. Bah, wow. bah. Hey, Steve, how you doing? What's going on, Steve? Not much, sir. There's a nurse in there giving him an injection. He's burned pretty bad. <laughs> It looks like he's just reading his lines off of the freaking teleprompter right in front of him or someone's just holding up a sheet of paper and he's just looking right at it. What's going on, Steve? Nothing much. It looks like he's burned pretty badly. You may want to get in there and give him a look. Hey, hey, Bert, you know you can just look at me when, I, when you're talking to me, right? Like, why are, you, why are you staring at the wall over there? I have a condition where if I stop staring at the wall, my eyes will fall out. Well, that sounds pretty dangerous. I guess we'll keep moving then. You just enjoy staring at that wall. So now we're at the hospital where the guy who got horribly burned in that van is. And this is also the guy who the katana gang are trying to kill and put the head on the piano. How is he? You think he'd be able to answer a few questions? No way, his lips are burned. So what, he'll never be able to talk again? Oh, he'll talk again, but you just have to give him a couple of weeks. Next time, guys, catch him in one piece. Thanks, nurse. Cool, so the guy can't talk because his lips are burned, which is hilarious, but he won't be able to talk for two weeks because his lips are burned. So we have a very normal conversation between the nurse and the two cops. Do you like what you see? I love what I see. Would you like to touch what you see? Yes. Yes, I would. Would you like to go out with me? Uh-huh. Yes, I would. Would you like to fuck me? Bingo. I didn't edit anything out of this conversation. They just start having this weird ass conversation. They go from talking about the patient to randomly flirting hardcore with each other. It makes no sense. And it's not over yet. Well then let's see what you've got. 
doesn't interest me. Wait a minute, did she just look at his pants to see what he was working with? And then immediately says, I'm not impressed. Nothing there. Nothing there? Just exactly what would interest you? Something the size of a jumbo jet? Have you been circumcised? You tell me, you just looked at the thing. Yeah, I have, why? Well, your doctor must have cut a big portion of it off. No, he, uh, he was a good doctor. Good doctors make mistakes too. That's why they buy insurance. Whoever wrote this scene is absolutely incredible at their job, obviously. I'm also wondering why behind them it says dentist office. I thought we were in a burn unit for the burn victim. Hi, Joe. Hi, Frank. How you doing? Watch the room from all sides. The burnt man's very important to us. So I don't know if you remember her, but now the evil girl from the Katana gang is going into where the burn guy is at, and she's disguised as a nurse, so this may not go well. Are you kidding me? This guy's hiding underneath the sheet and nobody saw that? So they cut the guy's head off, and as you can see, that's his head. There we go. We're gonna throw it right in there, into the bucket, and then put it on the piano. Call security! Hey, wait a minute, nurse. Wait a minute. Why does nobody's voice in this movie seem to match what the person would actually sound like in real life? Like this big dude here in the hallway has a voice like, Hey nurse, where are you going? So they've got the burn guy's head in a bag and they are trying to escape with it. This is just classic. Don't mind us. We're not holding a head in this bag. Hey, wait a minute. I want to talk to you. Ah! Oh! Hey, wait a minute. I want to talk to you. Ah! And then they beat someone else up outside and now people are really on their trail. Can I see some ID? Oh! So the bad guys get away with the head, but now Samurai Cop doesn't have the captain too happy. Everything you did was wrong. You're the one that talked me into bringing this moron from San Diego to fight the uh, Japanese Katana Gang. Hey, can you repeat those lines just one more time for me and try to say Japanese correctly? And I don't know why he's actually so pissed, all things considered, the only thing we've seen the guy do in this movie is catch some bad guys in a van who had cocaine and then flirt with a nurse. So I'm not sure why the captain's upset with him, but maybe we'll find out from the conversation they're having. An officer lost his hand. God damn you guys. Well, it makes a little more sense now. So now our samurai cop and his detective friend are not very big friends with the captain anymore, and he may get kicked out if things keep getting worse. So now they need to figure out what the heck is next to stop this katana gang. Well, it seems there, there's this restaurant, Blue Lagoon, on 3rd Street near downtown. Fujiyama, the head of the katana gang. This is where he's been hanging out. So now they can go there and maybe try to stop him. What does katana mean? It means Japanese sword. I love this line so much. Why didn't I think of that? The definition actually is a long, single-edged sword used by Japanese Samurai. Congratulations, you're learning something on this channel. So these two don't play any games or waste any time at all. They go straight to the restaurant where everybody's eating in the Katana Gang, and they walk straight up to the table. Are you Fuj... Fujiyama? Yes, I am. Who are you? I'm a cop. Okay, maybe we need to work on the introductions a little bit. Going up to the main villain of the movie and saying that you're a cop is probably the worst introduction possible. Hey, counselor. <laughs> we'll see you in court. <laughs> A little over the top. Who's that blonde girl? Oh, her name is Jennifer. She's the boss. The boss? You mean she owns this place? Her mother owns the place. Where's her father? Bang! He killed? Who shot him? He! Who's him? Himself! Oh, he committed suicide. Yes! <laughs> So after that weird interaction with that cartoon character-like person at the door, they go outside and get attacked. One guy from the Katana Gang recruits all these extras to come in and get their ass beat by our main characters. So what are you gonna do? Fight this guy barehanded? And then while Samurai Cop is struggling for the katana with the other guy, the shyest, most sad guy comes out with a gun and starts shouting orders. Freeze you motherfuckers! Leave him alone! Uncuff him! I mean it, uncuff him! Guys, come on, that's really mean! Uncuff him! Stop it, right now! So you know the rule now that has been created by the Katana Gang. We don't want anybody who's a prisoner. We don't want anybody who's going to snitch. So everyone's heads will be cut off and put onto this piano right over here. They have a collection of heads on their piano now. So the Katana guy from the Katana Gang pulls out this submachine gun now and he is going to just unload on all of the guys. Frank, look out! 
He's shooting them with what's so clearly just paintballs, and the movie's not even trying to hide it whatsoever. The guy just gets sprayed with paintballs and is just there like, oh, I've been shot. And then we're just gonna call him the Katana guy from the Katana gang from now on. He blows up the detective's car. You know, rumor has it that uh, you own the restaurant. You're a police officer. Questioning is the nature of your business, isn't it? Yeah, but my visit today is simply social. Why? Oh my goodness, either she was able to say why without her lips moving or there's another lady in that room speaking for her now. Because when she says why, her lips don't move there. Why? How would you like to eat somewhere else for a change? with me. Samurai Cop tries to go on a date with this restaurant owner girl, but she ends up turning him down, so he says maybe some other time. Now we're gonna get into another awesome fighting scene where we're gonna kick a bunch of extras asses again. Don't move. What are you gonna do, shoot me? The last words of a cop the other day who was shot and killed were, what are you gonna do, shoot me? When someone points a gun at you and you don't know who they are, your first assumption should be that they're gonna shoot you. And the first thing that you say to them should not be, what are you gonna do, shoot me? Because they just might shoot you. They literally have a gun to your head. <laughs> The way people get beat up in this movie is so hilarious to me. It's almost like a joke film. I feel like I'm being pranked right now and it just keeps going on over and over and over. Stay back. This guy's mine. Ah! I don't know about you, but there's nothing threatening about this to me. Stay back. He's mine. So while he's beating these guys' asses, I'm kind of left wondering why he's beating these guys' asses, who these people are, and what the point of this is in the first place, because he kind of just shows up here after going to talk to that sweet lady, and then just proceeds to beat these guys up with a baseball bat, so I'm assuming they have something to do with the Katana gang, but it beats me, man. This guy trips over nothing right here to allow the main character to catch up to him. So Samurai Cop arrested the guy who fell down. The guy who gets arrested gives information to go to this house, and there's more bad guys there, and we're gonna beat up those bad guys too. If Akamura is here, then we'll arrest him, and we'll have a solid case against the Katana gang for hiring four assassins to kill a policeman. Ah, so that's why we're at the house. Thanks for reminding me, man. I forgot. On the other hand, if it's the wrong house, then we'll apologize to the owner. The usual police routine. Who's gonna answer to Captain Romo on this? you burn my ass. This time he probably cut my dick too, huh? You better come to my house before you report to the captain. For what? Let's use it before you lose it. <laughs> Every time this movie gets a chance to make a dumb sex joke, it does. Like, I in no way believe that any of these people have any chemistry at all. Hey, preacher, you and I got nothing to do. Let's fuck. Shut up. So this girl who was the helicopter girl at the beginning of the movie has now hit on and wanted to have sex with Samurai Cop, hit on and wanted to have sex with his partner, and ha has now hit on and wanted to have sex with a different cop on the police force, which wins the award for cringe for me. Freeze, Nakamura! While this guy's running away, I just want to point out how there's an 80s style arcade game just sitting in the corner of this game gangster's house. I'm on arm. You gonna shoot me? Fight me like a man. Oh, what is it with the sound effects in this movie being so damn loud? I was just trying to watch a movie, not get hearing damage. So now, surprise, surprise, we are in another fight. Samurai Cop cannot avoid being in a fight at least every three minutes in this movie. He's got to be in some sort of crazy fight. I mean, it's probably not going to go well for the guy who's fighting Samurai Cop because look at his long flowing locks. They're just so luscious and long. There's no way he could possibly lose a fight. I love that not even attempting to block, just getting punched in the face five times in a row. So Samurai Cop obviously wins the fight, right? And then while his partner is trying to arrest the guy, you can't even hear him because the music is so loud. Sorry, what's that? I can't hear you. What? Well, this one's dead too, not captured alive. I mean, we understood that very well when you said he was dead. Um, you didn't have to re-emphasize it even more. We cannot kill any of them now, but we should punish them somehow. Call New York and get somebody to break both of those summoner cops' legs. But don't you or your men get involved. So they're gonna call New York to try to send some guys down to break these two cops' legs so that they learn a lesson. And in the literal immediate next scene, no time has passed, we have those guys showing up to this desk here and now talking to this lady. Excuse me. Where did the tall guy with the ponytail go? How much time has passed here? Has it been an hour? Has it been a day? Has it been a month? Has it been a week? How long have we had since this last fight ended and now they've sent these people down? They had to fly from New York, right? They're just there. Well, just a little bit with it. The voice actors in this movie didn't even give a crap. I feel like they went wherever they recorded their lines one day and literally just did this. We did got a little bit it with it. Whoever the director was was like, oh my goodness, that's fantastic. We don't need a second take. That was beautiful the first time. Well, I don't want to bore you. He immediately kicked all of their asses again and now we're in another scene where he's about to talk to this pretty lady that he likes from the restaurant again. How did you know I'd come home with you? Let's just say I can read eyes. So while Samurai Cop is reading this girl's eyes, the Katana gang is wreaking havoc around with all the police officers of the precinct. I want to know where your samurai friend is. 
and I want to know now. So Katana Dude from the Katana Gang straight up kills this officer and his wife. And it's super depressing out of nowhere, so I didn't show it because I care about you guys. So while Samurai Cop's flirting with his girlfriend, literally every single person he knows on the police force is actively getting their house broken into. And he's just off in a Speedo having fun on the beach. Hey, take it easy, man. I can kill you now, or I can relieve you of this gift. This black gift. What the hell am I watching right now? These guys are trying to cut off this guy's penis. This guy's trying to get out of giving away his penis! <laughs> and they're referring to it as his black gift. I can't be the only one who's absolutely taken back by that line, but before they can cut off his black gift, he fights back. Leave him alone! Leave him alone! Dead jerk! You love cutting people, huh? Now you're gonna get it. We go from him killing the two home invaders to them playing around in the pool again. Someone gets almost kidnapped or captured, then we go back to the date. Then we go back to someone getting kidnapped or captured, then we go back to the date. So the next person on the list is that helicopter pilot who wants to have sex with everyone. Hey, baby. Well, that sure didn't go well for him. Anyway, she loses, and then she gets held down by three of the guys. He literally grabs the boiling water that's on the stove and starts to pour it on her freaking body. And he proceeds to pour literally all this water on her, and then they leave. There's no point to anything in this movie. Anyways, now they're after Samurai Cop. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jennifer. Happy birthday to you. Did this guy forget that he's almost been killed maybe eight times over the last day, and that maybe he should be working on this case and not flirting with this girl who's literally connected to the main gang leader? No, he's just having a fantastic time. Man, what a douchebag. Hello. Get out of your house. I mean, I mean, fast. Get out fast, man. Well, guys are looking for you. So these guys, in the worst way possible, especially that guy on the left, are creeping up on this guy trying to kill him now. And now, we get another fight. <laughs> So now they escape from the other two people that were attacking them. And what does she do? She immediately goes back to the restaurant to tell her mom that she's in love, right in front of the gang leader. Because I'm in love. Mr. Fujiyama, who's the Katana gang leader, really liked this girl and is very upset to hear that she's in love with someone else, especially the samurai cop. Now we go back to the police station where they're talking to the captain who is always pissed off for some reason, literally always pissed. I mean, to be fair, I'd be pissed if I was the captain and samurai cop was one of my cops. And honestly, I'm also pissed that he didn't bring the girl with him to keep her safe. That's like the stupidest thing to do. This guy's a douchebag. I should fire both of you. You never brought me one of those bats that been alive so I can nail him with something. Do you know something? I don't give a fuck. There's only one thing in this world I want. I want you to find that motherfucking Japanese gangster. I want you to kill him and I want you to kill every one of his men. I want you to turn his house into a bloodbath. Don't leave anybody alive. And when they're all dead, you come back to me and all three of us will turn our badges in. My goodness, this captain's on drugs or something like that. He's either pissed off or ready to go to war with everybody and leave nobody alive. And let's just say I'm really happy this movie's almost over. They're here, boss. Where's the girl? She's down in the basement. The mother? Being kept in the villa. Use it. Finish him. Okay, Bob. Samurai, drop your gun, or your sweetheart will be dead. Every time the villain talks, it just sounds like a bad villain from a comic book or a cartoon. He doesn't want to do the killing himself. Go ahead and drop it, Frank. You American cops aren't as smart as I thought you were. Your cinnamon always gets in the way of your intelligence. Did he say your cinnamon always gets in the way of your intelligence? I'm just joking, I know it's sentiment, but it sounded like cinnamon. Samurai Cop made his partner drop his gun so that the girl would be safe, and then he pushes the girl away and then shoots the guy right in the chest. But don't worry, that guy's immediately fine and he has a bulletproof vest on. It's your turn now, Cop. Say sayonara. No! With all his money and success, he's not as smart as I am. To do what? Put on a bulletproof vest, man. Every time in this movie that someone asked a rhetorical question, the other person around them had to go, Wait, what do you mean by that? I got one more thing to take care of. Yamashita, he's still alive. <laughs> Honestly.
Honestly, every time someone's stupid enough to come up to me while I have a gun with a katana, I'm just gonna shoot them too. So again, these bad guys are idiots. Hey, Joel, do they call you samurai? Let's see how good you are with the sword. Come on, try me. So the very last surviving guy has challenged him to a duel with katanas. The samurai cop is about to show his samurai skills. Is this what samurai do before fights? They just swing their swords around wildly. So they lose their swords pretty quickly in the fight and there was really no katana fight. They did like a couple hits on each other and then they kind of quit. But now we're just in a full on fist fight. Lost. What was that finishing move? That was so stupid. Like that he just cranks his neck backwards a little bit and then he's like, you're done, you lost, by the way. You know the code of the Bushida? No, Joe, you're a cop. His partner goes, no, Joe, don't do it, you're a cop. As if he hasn't killed like 137 people already in this movie. What, what is he doing? No. Leave him alone. He's a samurai who wants to die with honor. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah, dying with so much honor there. Oh, that's disgusting. He's dead. Any guess how the movie ends? Yep, he ends up going right back to the beach with that girl he likes, and he's in that speedo again. And then the movie just immediately ends. There's no closure on what happens if they turned in their badges or not. There's no closure on what happened to the girl who got boiling water poured all over herself. So many plot holes, so many gaps, so many things left unsaid. But maybe it's for the best in this movie. But nonetheless, I thank you for watching it with me. If you enjoyed this video, it's been amazing to have you here with me. That's gonna do it for me today, though. If you liked this video of mine, there's a video on the screen right now that the YouTube algorithm thinks that you would like. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you click on that one as well. Bye-bye.